Hey, good evening and welcome back to Answers on Eschatology. My name is Dan Derry and I'm the president of the Institute of Fulfilled Eschatology. Hey, if you notice, I'm uh, speaking a little bit quieter than normal. I've got a <clears throat> sore throat and I'm pretty much have the flu, so I'll try to be quick this evening, but I do want to get a video. It's going to be a, a short week for me again this week, so I really wanted to get one out no matter what this evening. We're going to take a we're going to finish up Matthew 24 in this video, but we are going to go into Matthew 25. As you know that to end a study in Matthew 24:51 is like ending a study in mid sentence. Uh, Matthew 24 and 25 in the original are one discourse, and that's how I want to study them. So, we're going to jump into Matthew 25 in the next video. We'll have lots of good stuff to get into there. For now, let's read our text for this evening. Matthew 24:48 and 51 says this. But if that slave Sorry, but if that evil slave says in his heart, my master is not coming for a long time and begins to beat his fellow slaves and eat and drink with the, with the drunkards, the master of that slave will come on a day when he does not expect him and at an hour when he does not know and will cut him in pieces and assign him a place with the hypocrites. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, if you recall from the last video, we showed you that Jesus uh, told his disciples that based upon their obedience and their stewardship of the gospel, the gospel of the kingdom, that they would be rewarded with their inheritance at his coming. These stewards in this context, uh, who he had appointed over uh, his household were the apostles and specifically the first century generation of witnesses who had been with him from the beginning, who had authority to preach the gospel to Israel. And according to their obedience to that message, they would be Number one, either rewarded with the kingdom at his coming, or two, in this text we're dealing with tonight, they would be cut off and appointed a portion with the hypocrites. Now, when would this take place? Because, as we've seen in last video, this reward would take place at his coming. It would be the kingdom. It would be their inheritance. But when would this place uh, of weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth uh, take place? When would this judgment take place upon these evil Slaves. Well, to better understand this, let's go to Luke 21. Obviously, a parallel discourse to Matthew 24, and Luke sheds some light on this. Watch this, Luke 21, 34 and 35. But be on guard, so that your hearts will not be weighted down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of life. And that day, what day? The day of his coming, the coming of the Lord on the clouds of heaven, and that day will not come upon you suddenly like a trap. For it will come upon all those who dwell on the face of the earth. Again, Jesus is telling his disciples, be wise, be faithful slaves, faithful stewards. If not, that day, his coming like a thief will come upon you as well. Because, watch this, it is coming upon all those who dwell on the face of all the earth. Now, our futurist brethren will jump at this and say, look, future global judgment is coming upon all those who dwell on the globe. Well, no. That's not what Jesus said. Remember, this is covenant. Jesus is dealing with, in this context, and in the entire chapter, he's dealing with the removal of an old covenant world and an old covenant people. Remember, one man, one woman will be left. One man, one woman will be taken. The world of flesh and her seed would be removed and judged at the coming of the Lord. The world of spirit and the new covenant seed would be fully established at the coming of the Lord. And Jesus is now telling his disciples, he's warning them not to uh, apostatize, not to become evil slaves who spurn the coming of the Lord, or else they would be judged with all those who are dwelling on the earth. Now watch this. All those who are dwelling on the earth is not every person on the planet. Look at these words. Matthew 21, verse 35. For it, that is the judgment, will come upon all those who dwell. This word dwell is kathomai. It means to be settled, be fixed, be established. Who dwell on the face. This word pro, a face is prosopon in the Greek. It means the, the face, the look, or the outward appearance. So these who would receive this judgment at its coming were those who were fixed and established on the outward appearance of all the earth. That word earth is gi, land. Those who were those who had fixated their their focus and, and their life on the outward appearance of the land. Jews. See, this is the judgment of the old covenant world, and it was the judgment on those who had been fixated, who had been established, and, and uh, refused to be removed 
from the appearance, the outward appearance of that old covenant world, of that land of Judaism, of Israel. See, that's who this judgment, the coming of the Lord, will come upon. And Jesus said, if you are unfaithful to this ministry and this mandate, you will be appointed, appointed a portion with the hypocrites. Now, it's interesting. This word hypocrites, uh, hypocrite in the Greek is hypokritos, and it means an actor or pretender. Well, who were these hypocrites who had fixed their focus on the outward appearance of the earth, of Judaism? Well, it was those, those who said they were Jews and who were not. They pretended to be Christians, although they, they were just Judaizers. These are Old Covenant Israel. These are first century Jews. These were the hypocrites who were destined to be cut off and who Jesus warned his disciples not to become, not to fall away, to remain faithful, or else they would lose their reward, they would forfeit their kingdom, and they would be judged at his coming just like these hypocrites were. And when would this judgment take place? Well, go with me to Galatians chapter 4. Jesus, or sorry, Paul tells us definitively when these hypocrites who were persecuting the saints would be cast out and would be judged. And he places that at the establishment of the, of, of the, of the new covenant in his generation. Uh, Galatians chapter 4, 29 and 30. Paul says this, but as at that time, he was born according to the flesh, that was Ishmael, persecuted him, Isaac, who was born according to the spirit, so it is now. Paul says, just like that flesh seed persecuted the seed of spirit, the seed of promise, so it is now. Old covenant Israel was persecuting the true, uh, true Israel, the body of Christ. But Paul says in verse 30, what does the scripture say? Cast out the bondwoman and her son. You see, that's Matthew 24, 41 to 42. The bondwoman is, is the old covenant, and her son is that old man, that old covenant seed that would be removed and judged at the coming of the Lord. Paul says, cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall, the bondwoman shall not be an heir with the son of the free woman. And in this context, Paul is talking about the coming and the full establishment of the new covenant, of the new Jerusalem. And when that new covenant was fully established, that bondwoman and her son, that old covenant world and her seed would be cast out. This is when those evil slaves, if they would become that, if they would become unfaithful, this is when those slaves would be appointed their portion with these hypocrites, these pretenders in Galatians chapter 4. That's exactly what these Judaizers were. They were parading around as Christian Jews, but forcing and 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 uh, seducing Jewish Christians and, and Gentiles to go back to the law of Moses. They were the hypocrites of Matthew 24 and verse 50 and 51. And it's these that Jesus said, if his, if his disciples were not careful, they would, they would lose their inheritance and they would be appointed a portion with these Judaizing uh, uh, old covenant seed of Israel and their old covenant world. This place is... This, this judgment in Matthew 24, 51 in the first century generation. They would be appointed a portion with those hypocrites, but those hypocrites were first century Jews who were judged when the old covenant world was cast out in AD 70. Well, that's all I've got for this video. As I said, we're going to jump into Matthew 25 and verse 1 next video, and we're going to get into some good stuff. Uh, you know, I don't think a lot of... Probably most people don't teach Matthew 25 as, ma as much as Matthew 24, so I hope I can bring out some new things for you. Uh, I'm definitely going to learn some new things studying it. I always do, uh, but uh, it, it, it's going to be a very fruitful and blessing study, I'm sure, and we'll pick that up next time on Answers on Eschatology. We'll see you then. Have a great day. Have a great night. Bye for now.